Somebody did. Good. We're good. Ready to go. Okay, I'm the facilitator this week for the DEI Working Group. Welcome to the meeting. Thanks for being here. I'm very excited to see everyone. It is July 7th and um, yeah, uh, let's drop the minutes one more time in the chat. If people would feel comfortable adding their name, that would be great. You obviously don't have to do that if you don't want to. And you obviously can leave your camera off. We don't care at all. We're happy to see you. If you'd like to participate and you don't want to unmute, you can just um, type in the chat and we try to uh, integrate that into the meeting. So uh, I think everyone here has been here before. So the, uh, you all know the rules already, but uh, just in case, it's always good to do a refresher, I guess. So um, we have a short agenda, it looks like. Um, so if you have something that's been on your mind for a while, you can feel free to drop that in there. Um, we're happy to, uh, I will probably have time to look at it if, if you want. So the first thing on the agenda is the DEI survey and the chaos contributions therein. I'm guessing Matt G put this on there. I did, I just wanted to let everybody know that the Linux Foundation is gonna be releasing a DEI survey um, in maybe like a week or 10 days or something along those lines. Um, and the chaos project has been a participant in contributing some of the questions. So thanks to the DEI reflection team. I see Justin on here, Elizabeth and Sean, um, as question serving as an inspiration for the, the survey. So just really happy to, to have the survey going out. Amy as well. There were two questions from OpenStack that I think in some form or fashion ended up in the final version of the survey. So Amy, thank you for for allowing us <laughs> to, to do that. That's awesome. Uh, and then there were also questions from um, Open Demographics, so the work of Dr. Nikki Stevens um, as well. So anyway, I just like to say thanks um, to everybody who's participated and thanks to Georg and to Nicole who gave us permission to <laughs> use the chaos logo on the survey going out. So uh, more to come on that, just pretty excited. Thanks, Matt. Does anyone have questions for Matt? Thank you for all the hard work. The survey looks really good. Do you know when we can expect the results? Well, so I think it's like it'll go out in like two weeks. Do Sean or Elizabeth, do you remember how long they were going to keep it open? We discussed uh, at least four weeks, probably six, because it's summertime. So, and then the data, the data, at least the current talk right now is the data will be made available in two forms. So the results will come out as a um, like, summary. Yeah, like a summary PDF document. And then the data will actually be available in two forms. So one will be um, in a very redacted anonymous form put on data.world and made available. And then the other is through um, permission, like approval, request and approval with the Linux Foundation. So we, the Linux Foundation is actually the holders of this data. We are not, like the Chaos Project is not. And so as Steve Winslow has been working, I think you know Steve Gehrig, but he's been working with Hillary at the LF to kind of work through the logistics of that. So there you go. As far as when those results will be available, I don't think they said yet. I don't. I don't think so either. No, I mean, I, yeah, I think I think it'll be a function of analysis. You know, we're not going to dump data, obviously, so there'll have to be some analysis period and discussion period. I would imagine about the analysis. Any other questions or comments about this? Then we shall move on. Um, global inclusion is a metric that we've been working on. I think Matt Cantu has been kind of spearheading this if, um, if I'm remembering properly. Um, Matt, do you wanna talk about this? Do you wanna walk through it with us? Yeah, I'd like to see that Trisha's the one doing work on this. 
Um, she's not here today, but in her absence, um, I'm going to bring up the global inclusion metric here. Um, so we've been working on adding some event um, metrics, event focused metrics to the um, to the roster of metrics we have here in the DEI working group. And the first one here, uh, the second one here, uh, we've already worked on inclusive experience at event and are, we're finding that. So this one is global, in, global inclusion, which I will um, share in the chat here as well. Um, and I'd like to try and get us to work a little bit on this, not too long, maybe five minutes or so, just to give it, give it more life um, uh, for more people. Um, so I shared the link here in the chat. Um, I'll let you take it from here, Elizabeth. Okay, uh, Sean, you want to pause the recording while we work on this for about five minutes? Yeah, I can. Um, okay, so we worked on that metric and now we are going to uh, let Matt and Trisha work on it some more and then we'll revisit this next week. So the next um, thing on the, <laughs> the next item on the agenda is another metric that we're working on called psychological safety. Um, and I did actually do some work on this since I was supposed to do it last week and I did not. I actually did that. So go me. It's a touchdown. <laughs> From downtown, really Elizabeth did. Barron. <laughs> so I don't know if we want to take some time and look at this. Um, I'm really glad you're on the call, Justin, specifically because you had some good comments and questions in that metric. And I, I want to see what you think about the changes that I was proposing or that I made. I did clean it up. So. Um, do we want to take maybe 10 minutes? Is that okay? And look at this metric again in a little more in depth? Okay, cool. So I guess, Sean, you get to pause again. Yeah, yeah, right on. <laughs> this will be a quick recording. We are working on psychological safety now. Yeah, thank you for doing that. Recording restarted. All right. Um, thanks, everyone, again, for your work on that metric. It's going to be a good metric. I will do some final cleanups and bring it back to the group next week, and we can maybe look at hopefully potentially releasing it. That would be good, so. My God, who is that cute freaking deer? <laughs> the quokka. The quokka. What is, is, is this? Okay, I don't know what that is, but it looks really cute. <laughs> Just gonna say that right now. Okay, um, it looks like we have a new metric, uh, event location inclusivity. Do we want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, I just I just added that. Uh, uh, I view that as the uh, so what I was thinking here was that uh, the city or state that a conference is located in uh, has some uh, could be problematic for some. So we know that the state of California doesn't allow travel for state employees to. Uh, something like 38 states in the United States because of LGBT laws that have been enacted. Hmm. Uh, and then so, and then there are also maybe issues of uh, uh, marginalized individuals and, and systematic racism where it would be dangerous for participants to visit places where there are laws and systems in place that uh, are discriminatory. Uh, so event location inclusivity seems like uh, something that's fairly timely right now with some of the legislation that's happening. Uh, and it also kind of matches what other places are doing in the state of California, for example. Uh, so the, the description of an event location and whether or not that location is inclusive, in, inclusive is, is probably important and should, uh, should be considered when people hold events, right? They shouldn't hold events in places where uh, people might be fearful to travel. That seems reasonable. Uh, Kevin, would you envision this um, also even going down so far as like the venue itself, uh, whether or not you know it's um, being it, it's it's equitable in its treatment of its employees, if it's unionized, if it's like a good place to host it, would that be included in this metric? I think we could probably do that without changing the scope too much. Like I know that, you know, conference organizers are somewhat limited in venues based on like their needs and things, but I think just 
having them be aware of, of those issues and like having them think about it anyway, you know, and trying to mitigate it as much as possible, I think it's a really good thing. Hey, How'd you do that guy? Uh, no, this sounds sorry. like an, oh, sorry, go ahead. I was just gonna say, even the even the NFL, didn't they cancel the, didn't they cancel the location of? Major League Baseball moved the All-Star game, I believe. Yeah, that's right. They moved the All-Star no, game minute. from. So, yeah, Charlotte, something was moved from Charlotte. Yeah, North Carolina's yeah. had that issue the past couple of years. It, it where, must have been where, the NBA All-Star game. Because there's no ba baseball in North Carolina, sorry. Yeah, so the yeah North Carolina has had events moved out. Uh, obviously, the the state of California has a list of states where they won't send people. Uh, so I, I think it's a, I think it's a kind of a timely and important issue. So um, I agree. What is the what is the metric, Kevin? Like, what would the so this would be event location inclusivity, right? So is the event location inclusive? I'm confused as to whether this uh, includes like accessibility as well. I don't think accessibility would be included in this. Yeah, I thought we were trying to include that, but I'm thinking that would probably have its own metric too eventually. Yeah. I, I might, I might. Uh, disagree with that because I know when I was planning events, um, we had a great event and it was not uh, accessible because it was in Canada and it didn't, they didn't. Uh, it was an old building and they didn't have any way. Uh, they had a few stairs and so um, it was not an inclusive venue at all. So I, I would maybe uh, include that in this metric. And I see Justin has his hand up. Yeah, to build on it, I think it is connected, but I might not look at it in that way of the venue accessibility. I think that might be a different metric, but where I think Kevin's, or where I'm, I'm reading in between the lines a bit, is there's other ways about inclusivity about, say, if you have contributors in pockets of India, and the cost of them going to an event in the US means they have to go through a six month visa application process and pay potentially hundreds of dollars and still get it rejected still go through all this process and that can be months, two months of people's salary just to go through that visa application process. So I, I think there's definitely an accessibility angle here, but I would look at it more about the actual travel restrictions of the event. And actually now too, I mean, it's less so now, but looking at the things that are coming out now with COVID and accessibility in terms of which countries allow which other countries in and whether the EU, there's all these other tricky parts there. So I, I would push back to that accessibility makes sense, but I would look at it more acutely in this way of how hard is it for people to actually get on a plane and go to the country without losing a, hundreds of dollars or being turned back at some point or being stranded over. Yeah, I would, I would agree with that. And I would add that uh, I think the like venue accessibility at that, at that individual venue level, I believe that is a metric. And I, th I think that would be its own metric though. So I had a question, who would use this metric? I feel I have a use case in mind. I just think of all these putting on my Fedora project hat. One thing that we look at with planning both different local events that might be a small pocket of contributors and also our global international event that we'll start picking up again next year. I would love to have this kind of metric as a way to point to other people who have thought about this issue and use that as a way to think about inclusivity for where we pick our events and where we host it. So I don't maybe have a lot of examples off the top of my hand head, but there's definitely places I would like to use this to be a better advocate for location inclusivity. I mean, I've been part of picking locations for a lot of academic conferences and accessibility is something we always look at. Like I, I, it should be on a checklist somewhere. So I, I think this, the way you're describing it, Justin, and Sean, and maybe this is also how you're seeing it, Kevin. You know, we've talked about metrics 
as sometimes being a measure of something. And so, for example, like the age of a pull request, like it's just something that we can measure and give a number to. Mm -hmm. um, right. Other other metrics, um, kind of serving as a, a source of, of thought or a source of, of inspiration or um, something that's not quite like measurable in the same regard. And so the way I heard you describing it, Justin, was more like the latter, which is that you would use this as a way to, to think through how you're planning events. This would to allow you to demonstrate that other people, like a, like a metric here, is, has been um, thought through as an important consideration when planning events. Is that, is that fair to say? Yeah, I agree with yeah. that. I would also say that uh, this metric would be would fit quite well with the uh, event badging and the way we ask yeah. the way we ask some of those questions around event badging. So, and to build on that, I feel like a lot of the kind of metrics that we work with compared to say other chaos working groups, we have a lot more of this qualitative side. So I think framing them as questions really helped me with these DEI metrics because so rarely is it that exactly what works in one project community is gonna be easily transferable to another. Um, so like there's things we can measure thinking about, well, what are like, you can look at visa laws for, you know, if you have people, it might be a process, but thinking like how, like where are your contributors traveling from, or where are they nat or where are their nationalities, and how might that impact where you choose events? So there are things you can actually look at, but just not so easily quantifiable as x x y numbers for these things. But just things to help you think them through. Like I think that's one one thing that makes this working group so much different than some of the others. So I I would agree with that, but I think. This, uh, this metric could actually have some things that are quantifiable. For example, is the location on a travel ban list for the state of California? Is the location listed as dangerous by the you know, department of, I, I'm not sure who does that. Uh, uh, the, state United, the State Department. The State Department. Depart by the State yeah. Department. Is it dangerous to travel to this country by the, the State Department, right? Is the uh, yeah, is it on travel ban for the state of California? Is it, uh, you know, there there are there are lists that uh, government agencies and and other organizations uh, make. So so there there is some some quantifiable uh, right. measurement to this. I would just I would just point out that the the things the places that California bans they ban because they're not inclusive places. That, the United States State Department bans are because they're either not safe or considered our enemies. And so they are designed to be exclusive, not inclusive. Right. So I'm just saying those two lists, I think the second list may not belong in the metric. Yeah, I I only included that list. Uh, as an example. But as an, lists, well, yeah. as an example of a, uh, if, we, if we broaden the scope to uh, to that accessibility, like, can I travel to that place in the discussion earlier? Like, yeah, so there, there are places we can't travel to uh, because they're they're dangerous for us. Yep. because our, gov our government doesn't allow it because other governments don't allow it or or because the they just make it difficult. Right. So if we right. if we broaden the scope to accessibility, then then that makes sense as well. I think I think I think I think accessibility of physical conference locations is important. There should be a metric for it. So maybe that's a different metric rather than broadening the scope of this metric. So the so it would be inclusivity, event location inclusivity, and event location accessibility, and those are two different metrics. I don't I don't really understand what in, event location inclusivity is after all this discussion. Because I can understand the accessibility, but I don't understand the inclusivity. Does that just mean that we rotate the conferences from country to country? I think uh, what Kevin is referring to is that, like, some places don't 
have very friendly laws oh, okay. for the LGBTQ community, for for instance. So oh, like right. if you're oh, a yeah. transgender person, then it, you might not feel safe traveling yeah. there or you might not find a gender neutral bathroom, for instance, because that's, yep. that's not a thing there. That part, yeah, that part. Okay, I did understand that. Um, but did you say there are 36 states on that list, Kevin? Yeah, something like that. <laughs> that's, yeah. Uh, pretty sure, pretty and sure I, I would add one of them. I would add uh, racial discrimination to that as well. So yeah, L LGBT and, and racial discrimination. So yeah, I, I think it's a good metric. It it probably has more salience in the United States culture than in some other cultures, but. It's not entirely the case. I just think it's differently nuanced in other cultures. Are we so are we thinking two different metrics or do we want to try to build build them out separately? There are we want to give this thought and come back to it later. They, they are two different things because inclusivity, as you describe it, relates to a government district like a state or a city. And accessibility, as I discussed it, refers to a particular facility, regardless of where it is, you know. So maybe like could venue, help us. venue accessibility mm -hmm. would venue, be different. That is a better, venue is a better word. It's much more clear. I think one thing that might help me is just to see a draft that we could work with since we're, we're kind of bouncing back and forth on the language and what it means. So I think if we could have a like a first a first pass draft on what this metric might look like, that would help me a lot just in terms of figuring out what is it one metric? Is it two? How do we divide it? Um, yeah. My initial thought was that it was two, uh, but I was but I was willing to expand the scope of, of inclusivity to uh, to include accessibility. Uh, so I, I'm perfectly happy to, to think of it as two. Kevin, do you wanna draft the, um, or start on the event location inclusivity? Sure. Awesome. Is there Anybody a volunteer else? for the other one? Or? I was gonna say, oh, I'm sorry. Do the other. Yeah, I mean, I can I can take a shot at the one that the accessibility one. Justin said he might as well. So. Oh yeah, Justin, I will let you take that. I got enough. <laughs> I'll let you take a first cut. And let, and if you share the document, um, you know, I we can, I can take a stab at it as well. Yeah. So. I think what might help me here, I, I'm actually really interested in drafting that, but it would just help me just to make sure I don't, maybe just to start with the one Kevin wants to draft first and we go yeah. through that and do edits and yep. then oh, I'm willing to take that one forward after we, we get that through that. Makes a ton of sense, yeah. Awesome, all right. And we are right at the end of the meeting time. What a productive Woo! meeting. Thanks everyone. Really appreciate you being here and uh, so have a great day. We will see you next week. Same time, see you next same week. Tips. All right.